Right now, Wisconsin lawmakers and advocates are demanding what they're calling common sense gun reform. We'll hear why some disagree. And the CEO of a Middleton software company reflects on how they've moved forward from the shooting that injured four people a year ago. Plus, the sergeant who shot a Racine teenager will not face a trial. What Tyrese West's mother is saying tonight. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 10. And thanks for joining us. Protesters filled the Capitol steps, hoping to draw attention to the need for gun control legislation here in Wisconsin. Amy Reed joins us live from downtown to explain what advocates on both sides of the issue had to say. Amy. Earlier tonight, dozens of people met here at the Capitol to rally for changes to our current gun laws. They said now gun con or the uh, gun violence in America, excuse me, has reached a public health crisis, though not everyone here could agree. Together, we are going to end this culture of gun violence. State representatives and others from the Wisconsin Coalition for Gun Safety rallied today for new legislation that aims to prevent gun violence. Family doctor Jeff Hebner said it's gotten to the point of a crisis. There's many solutions that need to be implemented. It's not a one-stop solution, but doing nothing is not enough. Legislators, including those here tonight, have a couple bills that have been introduced that they hope will address the problem, including one that would require universal background checks on firearm purchases. While those here say they support it, state leaders don't all agree. A spokesman for Robin Voss directed us to this tweet of his where he says he won't entertain proposals that take away Second Amendment rights or due process, and instead we should focus on mental health. Hebner said gun control is part of that. When I have a patient that's depressed, I ask them if they have and own a gun, if they have access to a gun. And we talk about safe storage. We talk about what are some of the options to make sure you can stay safe because it is the most lethal option. This is a direct impingement AR-15. It shoots a 5.56 bullet. It's a 30-round magazine. Right outside the protest, Tony Dunsell and Tommy Lager show off a gun law we do have, open carry. You know, he wants to keep his guns and go shooting when he's drunk. No, that's not what we are. We want to protect human life. We want to protect everybody's right to protect themselves with any gun that they feel fit. They said laws that restrict gun owners would only take away rights, and they see guns as a way to protect themselves and their families. And we understand that some people have lost, up here have lost children in mass shootings, but I don't want to lose my family in a mass shooting. I would I rather choose my right to defend myself. Exactly. Both sides agree they want more communication, which we saw in action as protesters and counter protesters talked. As two proposals about gun control move through the legislature, they expect lawmakers to soon do the same. A spokesperson for Representative Chris Taylor said those two bills have been introduced. There's the one with universal background checks and another would eliminate sales tax on the sales of gun safes. Now, both bills have a long process ahead of them, so it could be a while before we would see either of them as law. A powerful new public service announcement is tough to watch. It starts out like any other back to school commercial, but it's clearly not as gunshots ring out. It's made by a nonprofit founded by families of those killed at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut. Their goal is to shock people. They say the PSA is divorced from politics, that keeping kids safe is not a partisan issue. Tomorrow is the anniversary of a shooting at a Middleton software company. Four people were hurt when a WTS Paradigm employee began shooting inside that office. And Paradigm CEO Nathan Herbst released a statement ahead of the anniversary, writing, quote, many are still recovering from emotional wounds they'll carry for the rest of their lives. While we will never forget the horrific event and the pain it caused, we will also not let it define who we are and how we will live our lives. All four employees who were shot are now back at work. The, and Paradigm has set up a charity to support first responders, officers, and deputies who responded to the shooting. They have received national recognition. Susan Simon sat down with three of them who've confronted and took down the gunman. Their story is tomorrow on News 3 Now at 10. To weather now, thunderstorms later tonight could lead to flooding concerns over southwestern Wisconsin. Gary Canalti is keeping a close eye on the radar. 
Certainly are, Charlotte. Uh, right now, things are pretty quiet, but the National Weather Service has issued a flash flood watch from 3 a.m. until noon tomorrow for southwestern Wisconsin, including Crawford, Richland, and Grant counties. Uh, Doppler track right now shows just a couple of showers and isolated thunderstorms there. To the west, uh, some activity starting to develop to, uh, across southeastern Minnesota and western Iowa. That's what will move in later on tonight as it expands, and I'll show you that a little bit later on in the newscast. High temperatures today, lower 80s across much of southern Wisconsin. It was another warm Warm day. Temperatures are still in the lower 70s in Madison, in areas to the west and the 60s to the east, but those dew point temperatures mid 60s to the lower 70s. Some areas of fog starting to form around Viroqua, and you can see shower and thunderstorm chances increase by early tomorrow morning with some areas of fog, low temperature dropping into the middle 60s. Tomorrow will be another warm day with a chance of a shower or thunderstorm in the afternoon. Our high temperature at 80. That's our News 3 Now first alert forecast. Madison police say they found the vehicle involved in a hit and run crash on the north side. 60 year old Daryl Sunderledge was hit and died days later in the hospital. Officers say the vehicle involved was an SUV. They originally thought it was a sedan. No arrests have been made. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers. Dodge County officials have identified the man killed in a hunting related incident yesterday morning. 54 year old Kao Zhang of Milwaukee was shot by his 61 year old brother. This happened in Reeseville near Mud Lake Road while the two were hunting squirrels. Lieutenant John Sinclair said in a statement they hope the investigation quote will help the family through this tragic loss of their loved one. We're seeing County District Attorney Patricia Hansen has decided not to bring charges against the Mount Pleasant sergeant accused of fatally shooting a teen. The teen's family members believe he should face trial. If you shot him already, why did you put them shots in my son's head? He was down. Why? He was down. You was over him. According to police, Sergeant Eric Giese attempted to stop 18-year-old Tyrese West for not having the proper lights on his bicycle. There was a struggle after officers believe West had a gun. Police say Giese attempted to use a taser before firing his weapon. New at 10, the Kenosha Unified School District reverses its decision about a memorial for a student who was murdered in May. Yesterday, the district said it would not approve the cheerleading squad's idea to honor former squad member Kaylee Juga. Police believe her ex-boyfriend is responsible for her death. The district said it would be required to stay neutral since the accused killer is a former student to protect itself against possible legal claims. Now the superintendent is allowing a memorial at Friday's football game to go on as planned. The Madison Common Council has approved a resolution asking the Air Force to address noise and other concerns that come with the F-35 project. The decision came after several hours of public comment. If they cannot address that issue, council members want the Air Force to consider stationing the jet somewhere other than Truax Field in Madison. Supporters say the economic impact is too great and there are ways to address any potential noise concerns. The Air Force's decision is expected early next year. Madison Mayor Sacha Rhodes-Conway says her bus rapid transit plan will help decrease travel times and improve access. The Metro Forward plan will add routes and offer more subsidized passes. The mayor says rapid transit will also decrease travel times for bus riders up to 25% with improvements including dedicated lanes and larger buses. The plan also sets a goal to have a full fleet of all electric buses by 2023. More local news now. Officials with Second Harvest Food Bank say they've received a $3,000 grant to fund a Beloit Elementary School food pantry. Merrill Elementary School launched its pantry in 2015. It's open weekly and year round to student families, including those from other schools. Second Harvest president and CEO says the pantry makes sure kids aren't hungry and therefore perform better in school. A religious lunch program for high schoolers is officially coming to Verona. Tonight, the Verona Parks Board approved a request for the Jesus Lunch Program to host meetings at Harriet Park for the next six Wednesdays. They will pay a fee to use this space. Board members said religious groups have reserved the park for events in the past, so this request is not unusual. The Middleton Jesus Lunch Program sparked student protest three years ago because it took place so close to the high school. The program provides a free lunch to high schoolers while sharing a biblical message. Breaking news just ended the Channel 3000 Alert Center. Right now, firefighters are at the scene of a west side apartment complex. This is in the 5800 block of Russet Road, just behind Meadow Ridge Library. We don't know if there are any injuries at this time. We do have a crew on scene. 
And we'll have any updates at channel3000.com. Still ahead on News 3 Now Antenna, a new employment center on Madison's West Side, helping people join Exact Sciences workforce. And Canada's Prime Minister is apologizing for a photo that shows him wearing blackface nearly two decades ago. Stay with us. The Southwest Madison Employment Center is officially open. It's located on McKenna Boulevard in the building of the former Griff's Restaurant, which had been vacant. The Urban League of Greater Madison operates the center, providing on-site job training and skills development, plus neighborhood access to drop-in resume and job search support. They'll also offer job training opportunities with exact sciences. Short-term rental home owners will soon have to follow stricter rules in the village of Wanakee and the town of Westport. Police and board members in the two areas say neighbors have expressed a lot of concerns when it comes to Airbnbs or other rental home systems. They say too many instances make them feel unsafe and that there are a lot of noise complaints. The new rules include things like having the homeowners live at the place they're renting out, having multiple licenses and permits being approved by the village each year and more. Neighbors say they're in favor. I think the regulations that they're putting in place will really protect the neighbors in the neighborhood and hopefully will also protect the people that are doing short-term rentals. Some short-term rental homeowners we spoke with today say these rules won't necessarily prevent things from happening. More on what homeowners are saying, plus more details on the new rules are online at channel3000.com. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is apologizing for a yearbook photo of him in brown face makeup at a costume party nearly two decades ago. The photo came to light as Trudeau seeks re-election to the office, which he took in 2015. CBS News correspondent Tom Hansen has more. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau apologized late Wednesday for a yearbook photo showing him wearing brown face makeup at a costume party in 2001. 
I shouldn't have done that. I should have known better, but I didn't. And I'm really sorry. Time Magazine posted the photo saying it was published in the yearbook from a private school in British Columbia where Trudeau worked as a teacher before entering politics. The photo shows Trudeau wearing a turban and robe with dark makeup on his hands, face and neck. The Prime Minister said the photo of him dressed as a character from Aladdin was taken at the school's annual dinner, which Trudeau said had an Arabian Nights theme. Trudeau, who launched his re-election bid a week ago, was traveling on his campaign plane when he made the apology. I have uh, worked all my life to try and uh, create opportunities for people to fight against racism and intolerance. Uh, and I can just uh, stand here and say that I made a, a mistake uh, when I was younger and I wish I hadn't. An opponent running against the Liberal Party leader called the photo troubling and insulting. It's making a mockery of someone for what they live and what their lived experiences are. Another candidate for Prime Minister, Green Party leader Elizabeth May, tweeted that she is deeply shocked by the racism shown in the photograph. 47-year-old Trudeau faces a challenge from the Conservative Party leader in next month's federal elections. Tom Hansen, CBS News. When asked if he had done anything like that on another occasion, Trudeau said in a high school talent show he dressed up and sang a version of the Harry Belafonte banana boat song, Deo. A German automaker is looking to add some luxury to the, ex the electric scooter industry. Mercedes-Benz is teaming up with Swiss scooter maker Micro to create the two-wheel ride. The company hasn't released many details. The pictures show the e-scooter will come with a classic black coating, and it's branded with the Mercedes-Benz logo on the handlebar stem. It's expected to hit the market in early 2020. Washington, D.C.'s most visible landmark set to reopen to visitors tomorrow. The Washington Monument has been undergoing construction and repairs for several years now. You may recall back in 2011, a 5.8 magnitude earthquake centered in Virginia damaged the monument, causing some 150 cracks in it. After $15 million in repairs, it had reopened but then closed again in 2016 after an elevator cable snapped. In Bermuda, at least 27,000 customers have lost power due to Hurricane Umberto. Officials say that's 80% of the island. The website of the local power company says they're in an emergency state as rain and strong winds from the hurricane begin to slam the island. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti joining us now with a look at our uh, continued warm weather that we've been experiencing. Yeah, but that warm weather comes with a price. We've got a lot of humidity and that could lead to some rain and parts of our viewing area just don't need any more rain at all. So we've added an alert date to the forecast from late tonight into tomorrow, mainly in the morning for showers and thunderstorms that will develop. And that could bring an additional one to two inches of rain in some spots. Now, that's not an overly heavy amount of rain, but parts of southwestern Wisconsin have received five to ten inches of rain over the last seven to ten days don't need another drop. So that could lead to some localized flooding. And in fact, the National Weather Service has issued a flash flood watch from 3 a.m. until noon tomorrow for Richland, Crawford, and Grant counties of southwestern Wisconsin. Right now, things pretty quiet. Just a few showers and isolated thunderstorms moving through Vernon County. Farther to the west, we're starting to see some shower and thunderstorm activity develop. Now, it doesn't look too bad right now, but if we take a look at future radar over the next 12 hours, you can see how this area is forecast to expand and bring a fair amount of rain, especially into areas south and west of Madison. That's the area, of course, that has received the most amount of rain. Areas north and east could tolerate the rain a little bit more. So hopefully this rain will more, go more toward the south, but we have to wait and see as we head into tomorrow. Law, uh, the computer model forecast uh, just uh, through uh, noon on Saturday from our local computer model showing some very heavy rains over parts of northeastern Iowa. I don't know if Waterloo will come up with almost six inches of rain, but there could be some isolated three to five inch amounts there. Southwestern Wisconsin, about one to two inch amounts, and then lesser amounts to the north and east. And then as we take a look farther out into the future, the GFS longer range computer model from the U.S. government showing a general one inch rainfall through uh, Sunday and through the weekend uh, with the possibility for some two and three inch amounts and in heavier thunderstorms. The European computer model also showing eh, about three quarters of an inch to an inch, but also showing regions, especially over parts of central Iowa, that could pick up four or five inches. If that area shifts north or south a little bit. That could make a big difference in the amount of rain that we end up receiving. Fog right now, not too much of an issue. Seeing some little patchy areas of fog over parts of Vernon County. Uh, so far, not seeing any fog near Lake Michigan, but we'll see some patchy fog overnight. Live view from the Edgewater Skycam doesn't show any fog in the uh, lights of the Capitol, but as we check out the almanac for today, our high temperature topped out at 82, the low 62, well above the averages of 71 and 49. And right now we're at 72 degrees with mostly cloudy skies. Dew point temperature is at 65 degrees. 
Tropical depression in Melda right now, uh, centered uh, just to the north of uh, Houston, Texas. Maximum sustained winds 30 miles an hour, but it is bringing heavy rains to parts of uh, eastern Texas. Here's Umberto. There's Bermuda. It is now going to race off to the north and east, according to the latest forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Weaken into a very strong uh, weather system that will be uh, subtropical, but eventually head up toward uh, somewhere around Ireland uh, sometime in the middle of next week. So our forecast includes that flash flood watch over southwestern Wisconsin from 3 a.m. until noon tomorrow. For tonight, showers and thunderstorms developing, especially late. Low temperature at 64. There could be some patchy areas of fog as well. Tomorrow, shower and thunderstorm chances highest in the morning. Then we'll see a high of 80 with some breaks in the clouds in the afternoon. On future track, you can see those showers and storms moving in overnight and then moving through in the morning. Could be a shower or thunderstorm popping up in the afternoon with a high of 80. Tomorrow night, some shower and thunderstorm chances. Most areas staying relatively dry. And then on Friday, a chance of a shower or thunderstorm with high temperatures in the uh, lower 80s. Rainfall amounts variable, but the areas that see the heavier thunderstorms, especially over southwestern Wisconsin, could see an inch or two just over the next 24 to 36 hours. The 7 to 10 day forecast calls for another round of thunderstorms from Saturday afternoon into Sunday morning, but that will lead to cooler and less humid weather as we head into next week. High temperatures still in the 70s, dropping to the 60s at the end of the week. Rain chances will be a lot less. All right, Gary, thank you. You're Thanks, welcome. Gary. The Brewers look to continue their push to the playoffs. Show you how they did tonight at Miller Park against the Padres just ahead in sports.
Did you ever imagine a couple weeks ago we'd still have to have the Brewers as the first story in the sports cast? Well, here we are, less than two weeks from the playoffs, and the Brewers are right in the middle of the chase for the playoffs. Game three of their series against San Diego tonight, it was a real pitcher's duel. Adrian Hauser made only one mistake, that 94-mile-an-hour fastball that Seth Mejias Breen hits out for his first Major League homer. Keston Hero homered for the Brewers. It's 2-1, bottom of the ninth. Two out for recent hero Ryan Braun. <sighs> Missed by that much. Game over. Final score. Padres 2, Brewers 1. A 3-10 start at Miller Park tomorrow afternoon. Other scores of importance to the Brewers. At Wrigley Field, Cubs 2, Reds 2 in the 10th. At Bush Stadium this afternoon, the Cardinals beat the Washington Nationals 5-1. The Badger football team welcomes Michigan to Camp Randall this Saturday morning at 11. Wisconsin has beaten Michigan the last four times they've played at Camp Randall. This year's Michigan team, a little tough to figure out. They're ranked 11th in the country, yet they haven't looked all that good in their first two games. Now, they did have five NFL draft picks last spring, including two first-rounders. But this new group of Wolverines is still a bit of a mystery. Every team reloads every year, especially a good team like Michigan. They're a good program. They're always bringing in new guys and um, altering the system just a little bit. Yeah, those guys always have, you know, quick D linemen, quick linebackers. They lost some guys, but the guys that they plugged in are, are great players as well, so it really shouldn't be much of a drop-off. Everything's pointing for the Packers to beat the Denver Broncos Sunday at noon at Lambeau Field. Not only are the Packers 2-0, they're 7.5-point favorites. And since 2014, the Packers are 8-2 at home against AFC teams. Aaron Jones, the Packers' number one running back, of course, in the first two games, he's carried the ball 36 times. It's a long 16-game season, and head coach Matt LaFleur wants to keep his guy fresh. I think each game can dictate how much he's going to carry the ball, but I think all in all, I mean... That is a pretty physical position, and we'd like to keep a good balance between him and Jamal because we, we think Jamal is a pretty darn good back as well. And uh, so we'd like to even out those touches a little bit. This week's Prep Mania High School Football Game of the Week is undefeated Verona at one loss. Sun Prairie will have the game live on our website, channel3000.com, 7 o'clock Friday night. We'll also be streaming two other games Friday night. We'll have Edgewood at Stoughton, DeForest at Sauk Prairie. Live Friday night, 7 o'clock, channel3000.com. Badger men's basketball gets its second commitment in two days from two tall guys from Minnesota. Today, it's 6-foot, 9-inch Ben Carlson from Woodbury, Minnesota. Yesterday, 6-foot, 10-inch Stephen Kroll from St. Paul committed to the Badgers. And when number one plays number two, it's a big deal. And tonight in Lincoln, number one ranked Nebraska hosts Stanford, ranked second. Stanford goes into Lincoln and knocks off the top-ranked Hornhuskers in four sets. Toronto at 8 at the Fieldhouse, 9th-ranked Wisconsin hosts 12th-ranked Washington. And we'll be right back.
Got a flash flood watch out from 3 a.m. until noon for areas west of Platteville to Lone Rock to uh, Camp Douglas. Some shower and thunderstorm activity out there, but future radar over the next 12 hours shows a different story as we head toward morning. So keep an eye out for the possibility for some heavy downpours. All right, Gary, thanks. Thank you for joining us for News 3 Now at 10. Do something good, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.